happy Thanksgiving weekend, Canada. I literally just How's everybody doing. doing this morning? Yes, it's early, but um, the kids will be on their way. Hang on a second here. The kids will be on their way soon. They probably already are. Well, that's okay, barefoot. Barefoot. Um, that's okay. You know, it's, I just, you know, wanted to come in. Oh, there's my red fan. I just wanted to come in and hang out with you guys a little bit before um, my weekend, uh, before I become totally and utterly engrossed in being with the grandbaby. Let me pop the uh, chat out. And I'm going to give a chance for people to get in because people are going, what? What's, uh, what, is, what is she doing? <laughs> so uh, I'll say hi. You want me to say hi? Then then uh, make sure you say hi. And um, hey, Tara, is it Kovac or Kovic? Kovac. Um, hey, Susie W. Give me a minute. Let people come in. And we will, uh, then I'll, I'll pop it out and say hi to everybody. I will say hello to everybody. Hang on. I cannot imbibe in edibles today. Not that I have any. Because <laughs> <coughs> I have to pick my hair up at 9 o'clock today. <laughs> <laughs> so I shut this down at noon <clears throat> and uh, now he said he may, somebody at work may be sick and I don't know if that means I got to pick him up at 10 or 11 or if he's not coming at all or I got to pick him up tomorrow morning. I have no idea. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, House is, well, living room, dining room, kitchen, spitch spit polished and shiny nothing on floors and things for little people to put in their mouths and the the, the kitchen's been deglutened right so all right let me say let me pop out the participants list because it looks like there's 49 people here and that's pretty good for a saturday morning angela m oh speaking of angela hang on a second hang on hang on okay i'm back sorry about that angela m barefoot chickens cat nico uh edie murphy heather finley do you know that not finley but find with a d findley is an old name in my family um Candy, KB Canner, Lazaric Homestead, Linda Bop, Linda Van Rod, or Vinord, sorry, Lori M, Lori Peer, Mary Cook, Minnesota Farmer's Wife, Julie, Paige Family. Hi, Paige. How's it going? Peggy, my love. Uh, Redhead PM, Sandra Jones, Susie W. And I thought I saw somebody else. But there it is. How's everybody doing today? We are all ready to go. Um, I've got, you know, once the kitchen was deglutinized and then how he brought home groceries, the groceries got put away. There's no gluten anywhere. And, the, you know, the fridge has been clean. Um, Candy did a beautiful job when I, and I specified my, you know, I said, she said, do you want me to do the inside of the fridge too? And I said, yes, specifically also the freezer because my son did the fridge, but didn't do the freezer. So she cleaned my freezer, forgot the fridge. <laughs> I can't win, but that's okay. How he did it this morning. So Corey, hi, Joe. How are you, darling? Did you decide if you're going to spatchcock the chicken? No, I don't think I am. It's big. And I got a foil roasting pan. So I'm going to be covering a cookie sheet with foil to make sure that it doesn't contaminate the oven. And then I'm going to put the foil pan on the cookie sheet and I'm just going to cook the chicken. 
I'm going to put a piece of parchment in it, of course, to keep the, the meat off of the foil, right? How you feeling this morning, honey? You weren't feeling well. You didn't come last night. You weren't feeling well, Corey. What's going on? I know Finley is Irish, but that's all I know about it since I got it from my hubby. Well, the you know, you think of Findlay, Findlay Cast Iron. That's how my family Findlay name is spelled. And I don't know how far the name goes back. All I know is that my brother has it in his name and one of my nieces has it as a name because my dad said there always has to be a Findlay in our line. So when Arthur and Bel Mel have another baby, if and when, probably going to be another boy. I'm going to slip that in there and say, can you slide Findlay in there? Because it's kind of a tradition in our clan, right? So you caught a cold because you were out, you were out tripping the light fantastic and you picked up the cold. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's. It, it is the season. Like last year, I think it was like the 21st of October because Mel reminded me. I always thought it was the first weekend in October when, when we did her shower, but it was it was uh, just before Halloween. And, <clears throat> and we did the baby shower and Howie and I got sick. Briar got sick. We brought it home to Briar, you know, got him sick. It was uh, it was something else, and yet nobody. The only person who was anywhere close is mom. My mother in law Nan had been sick two weeks before, and she was sick for an entire week, so she had just gotten over it. So I'm wondering if she was still carrying. You know, <coughs> well, it may cook faster, but who cares, right? I'm gonna stuff it with sausage and peppers and onion. And then, you know, give me some gravy. We got some new potatoes to peel. And I got, I'm going to get the carrots out of the garden. <sighs> hey, old farmer's wife, how are you? I've been away for a bit. My mild heart attack and two stents a month apart. Really? Oh, well, awesome. I don't mean awesome that you had a heart attack, but awesome that it got took, taken care of. I'm telling you, um, I, continue to heal. And continue to do, you know, don't don't stop life just because you had a mild heart attack. Howie had a heart attack, remember? And they put three stints, two of them in one art, one one vein or artery or whatever it was, one in each end because it was clogged at two ends. And uh, and he's been just, you know, it, it took him about a year to get into his new rhythm because it was re it was really tiring. I guess he didn't realize how long he had been, you know, laboring with uh, with his ticker not working properly. And then for like six months after he got the stents put in, he was like, I don't understand why I'm so tired. I said, how it's called getting old, you know? Hey, Robin Rose. Oh, yes. I see my grandson today. I got, um, oh, I got to show you. I'm making him a puppy dog costume for Halloween today. What's that smell? Okay. He's getting some presents today. Um, I'm making him a dog costume if I have enough fabric for Halloween and I have this to make him a Dalmatian but then I found this and I put this in my fabric drawer this is a blouse that I had it's a 6x or some bloody thing way too big on me now I swim in it but it's cotton and look at the size of this there's more fabric in this than in the other one. And there's buttons. So that can be the back. So that it can be opened and closed. And I think I'm going to make him a brindle boxer. What do you think? Dalmatian? Brindle boxer. I think it's going to be the brindle boxer only for the sake of the amount of fabric that was in this blouse. And I think I paid only $20 for that blouse. 
So, Boxer, yeah! Me too. Well, I see, I already did. I already did this once for Briar a long time ago. Now look. Now that he's coming today, I'm not going to worry about the battery. So we're going to take the little tab out. Who howl Halloween? Oh God, the pages are sticking together. Okay, so we go. On Halloween, the moon shines bright, and spooky noises fill the night. Squeaking, flapping bats swoop by, and vampires laugh beneath the sky. <laughs> it's, a, it's a noisy book. Hey, can we shut it off? No, we can't. So we'd be careful how we touch it. But it's got... That's a really pathetic owl. Bubbling cauldrons and... So that's his book. His first book. I have another one. Um, what is this? Okay. Gotta put my ears on or Bubba wouldn't recognize me without my ears. I know. Well, he's, he's nine months old and he's taking two or three steps. But he, you know, we had a FaceTime yesterday and he danced. He wasn't still feeling too great, but he was feeling pretty good this morning. Excuse me, it's my first cup of tea of the day. The cow makes him cry. I got him a I got him a book of animals, but it's not farm animals. It's like crabs and dolphins and stuff. But I'm gonna look for a farm animal book. Mixed with pity, and she's so stubborn. Well, Gracie's stubborn. Oh my god, she's stubborn. Um, we went up to carrots are out and the apples are out we went to to up past gracefield got howie his snow tires yesterday or last night and that's why um freaky friday was like an hour late because i didn't realize that Ooh, i you know it's it's over an hour drive to it's it's an hour drive to manawaki so we went to manawaki picked up good snow tires on rims good like good snow tires on rims He's got his brakes and his drums. I think they're drums. And next week, we're getting his bearings. Poof. So, my how adults love children's book. Hi, Linda. Andrew, hi. Uh, Andrew, do you guys have like a Thanksgiving or a harvest supper? Do you, do you guys have like a Thanksgiving or a harvest supper? Because I've been explaining to people that Thanksgiving in Canada and Thanksgiving in the U.S. are not the same. They're the same in the sense where we have pumpkin pie and turkey. But in Canada, it's more of a harvest supper. They call it Thanksgiving. But when you say Thanksgiving, everybody thinks of Indians, pilgrims and, and, and stuff like and, and corn. And, and that's not... Um, that's not, uh, I have my phone on the do not disturb is off because they're, I want to make sure when they're on their way, I'm going to have a look, wonderful time. I mean, to me, I have no expectations other than reading him that book and we're going to pull the rainbow carrots out of the garden. Oh, I'm so excited. I just, you know, we got a bag of fresh potatoes, going to pull the rainbow carrots out of the garden, going to do some green beans. And today I am going to make, um, probably later today, or maybe, no, I'm going to have to do it today because the chicken's going to be in the oven tomorrow. I'm going to make a pumpkin pie, a gluten-free pumpkin pie, and a gluten-free apple pie with a crumbled top. Hey, Catsy! We have a harvest festival, but that's mainly a church event. 
We don't have anything similar to your celebrations. Not that I'm aware of. Well, it must go back a little bit farther because there's a, I have a book called, what? Is it here? Because if it's here, I'm going to look for it. Hang on a second. Yes, this off, as soon as the holidays are over, the office, there it is. The office is getting done over. I actually have this book. It's old and it's British, okay? Um, but I have another copy of it. This is the copy when I do finally read this book. I'll probably do it live and I will give away a copy. Now, oh my God. Um, hang on a second. Hang on. Okay. Anyway, they talk about it, how when the harvest is in, like, because these people, it's more of a farm thing. You know, when, when the harvest is in and, and you treat all the work, all the workers and their families come to the, to the boss's home and they have a great big harvest supper to celebrate everything and everything on the table from the pumpkin pie to the joy to beef, you know, all came from the farm. You were just brimming with anticipation. Well, I have only seen him three times. Kid's nine months old. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, he's going to be the entire folk, other than cooking dinner tomorrow, that was going to be the entire focus of my weekend. Seriously. Seriously. I'm going to read stories and sing songs and, you know, that kind of stuff. But I'm not going to overwhelm him either. I'm not going to, like, get right in his face constantly. A fresh fruits, I coat the fruit with vanilla sugar free pudding. Really? I don't do sugar free. I don't do artificial sweeteners at all. That's a good way to get Alzheimer's. That's what I heard anyway. Um, where is it? This is what I, I learned from a, a doctor no microwave popcorn ever. Because there's an ingredient they put in it to make in the butter to make it whatever. And it's it's the fast track to Alzheimer's. So is MSG. Aspartame, sucralose, and diacetyl, I think. Do I put anything in my tea? Yes, milk. Milk. See? Well, yeah, my cup is my teapot, so. Um Cat Nico, what advice? Who gave you advice? I got, oh, so I'm not, I'm not medicating with, with milk today because I have to, I have to wait until I find out whether or not I'm picking Briar up tonight. And, and, um, edibles, uh, have a long, have a long lasting effect. So, you can't stand the smell of popcorn. I love popcorn. I actually washed my teacup this week. It's been about a year or so. It's time. I do it about twice a year. I give it a good bleach and then I go <laughs> until it builds up the patina again. That fame sugar isn't right and cause it. The fake sugar isn't right and cut. That's what I just said. I can't. Well, I used to eat microwave popcorn all the time. And between medical marijuana, lorazepam to sleep at night and fibro fog, I'm, I'm practically an old timer. I'm, I got some timers now, right? Cause you know, the worse my pain gets, the worse the fog gets. And yes, I'm still having mouth pain. I've just learned how to figure out how to handle it. When this gets really bad, 
here, I push, push, push with all my might and I hold it there. And then when I release, it stays. It's like, but it's when the teeth get used a lot and they start to get more loose, um, the nerves are exposed and they're being held by gums and it's a really painful process. Also won't pit the stainless. Really? I put clay, plain kernels in a brown paper bag and microwave. I microwave and, or not microwave. I have a great big old heavy bottom stainless steel pot that I that I uh, make my popcorn with and a glass lid with a vent. And it works every time. And and I used to think, oh, you know, I do, do it without oil or anything. And then it started sticking. And then one day I burned it. I made got the bright idea to put sugar in it for kettle corn. And it burnt the bottom of my pot until I discovered pumice stone. This is a really lightweight uh, spongy stone that wears down pretty quick, but I'll tell you something. I use it to clean around my, um, around my spout of my canner. You can get right in there like this. And I use it to clean anything I can't get off. Pumice stone comes out. Hey, Barbara, how are you? Linda say, is it Saya? I put plain, yeah, that's what, uh, that's who I, um, so I bought the I, I got these on at Amazon. And and if you get hard water buildup in your toilet and stuff, like I don't use I don't use Lysol toilet bowl cleaner. I use Dawn and Vinegar. And normally that works, but down around where the water sits, it eventually gets a buildup of hard water. And although my, my bathroom was cleaned professionally yesterday. Um, this also one of these, like I won't use it as the same one in the kitchen. I'll have one for the bathroom and one for the kitchen, but this, this will take all those heart, the hard water scale and everything right off the inside of your toilet. So, and your oven too, if you don't want to do a chemical oven, um, I, I watched a lady do it. It's a lot of work. So it's cleaning the oven, but she, she, uh, sprays it like down with wa warm water and then she makes a whole paste of um apple uh, uh apple. she makes a whole paste of baking soda baking soda and water and she makes a paste that will stay all and she coats the inside of her oven with this paste and then she lets it sit for an hour and then she puts vinegar in a hour or two then she uses um, vi a vinegar in a spray bottle, spray it all down. And then she just uses paper towels and just wipes the whole oven out and anything left burnt on in the oven. She, this is where I learned this. She uses a pumice stone. Brilliant woman. Brilliant. This is old technology guys before he heavy duty chemicals. Although there were chemicals being used in my house yesterday. So, well, my oven has been cleaned now. It's got, because it had to be deglutenized, right? I'm quite concerned about the artificial sweeteners and Alzheimer's. That's all I've ever used since my teens. My memory is getting really bad. I'm having trouble with my thoughts and memory. Okay. Try, get, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get, I'm, uh, what I would do me personally is I would switch over to something like monk fruit sugar, which has no glycemic index. And it's, and it's wonderful. Angie brought some up when she was up here last summer. And uh, that, that doesn't spike your blood sugar at all. Okay. Artificial sweeteners are a fast track. Are, are, that's what I've heard anyway. Just, hey, Michelle, just want to let you know I use laundry soap to clean my shower and it worked great. You mean powdered laundry soap that we were talking about? Hey, Empress. but it had a so stock on the end of it. Wow. Well, I'll have to check. Acetylcholine is needed out of what I read for Alzheimer's. Pure cane. See, Howie's diabetic too. And we use, we use pure, we use organic cane sugar and uh, honey and homemade maple syrup. Now, Everybody goes, 
oh, look at all the stuff you make. Your husband's diabetic. Everybody knows that I reduce the sugar in my recipes. When I give you the recipe, I tell you how much to use. But I, it, you watch me. I use less. I use a lot less. Um, oh, the homemade laundry soap. Okay. Okay, had the same pumice stone last there, but it, it was on a stick. It had a stick. Just break the stick off. Unless you, you know, that would be good for the toilet. Because then you're not putting your hand in the water. That's okay, Lori. Yeah, auto. Do you know what? You want to talk about autocorrect and voice typing? You want to mangle the English language more than a teenager? You try and voice type. Right? I'm half asleep some nights and I voice type stuff to Howard and, and he, you know, well, let's put it this way. Um, oh, I put that away. It's part, one of my fans. I'm going to have to fix them somehow. Um, I texted him at work and, uh, or when he was picking Briar up and I said, um, get some Robaxa set. I need some Robaxa set. This was before we were buying it at um, Costco. And no, you can't get it in the States. And, and when they got home, because I never checked, right? When they got home, Howie goes, oh, oh, I'm going back to bed. That's what it was. I'm going back to bed. For the, uh, I'm going back to bed or I'm going to bed because it was late, they were whatever. And I said, you know, pick up some Robaxa set. I love you, right? And and it came out, I'm going to bed to have robot sex. Love it. So when Briar and Howie got home, they're laughing. How's your robot sex? Went, what the hell are you mm -hmm. talking about? On our way! Yay! They're on their way! See, they always travel around baby's nap time so that he'll sleep in the car. So, I mean, voice type and and even when you use it in the proper context, they'll misspell here, here, and here. Here, here, and here. Or uh, there, there, and there. Or, or those words. They'll, and, and it just looks makes you look like a total idiot. Or autocorrect comes in while you're voice typing. And then it's robot sex, right? <laughs> Another good use for real old-fashioned pumice stones. They work great on callous crack feet. I know that. Not that pumice stone in the foot care section. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's just really expensive. I think I paid... I got four of them. I'm sure of it. I think I paid $15 for four of them on Amazon. And they're in my wish list. Do you know why they're in my wish list? Because I'll always have a use for them. What smile? Ashley always refused to sleep in the car. Well, see, Arthur, uh, starting at about five years old. No, four years old. Arthur started going. Arthur's first trip to New Brunswick he was four, I believe. And his dad picked him up. I, I remember he was four. Do you know how I remember he was four? Because we were still living in Peterborough. And we were on our way. It was June. Um, and we were on our way to my best friend's wedding. Geraldine. And I did the pregnancy test for Briar that morning. So when Howie, when Howie was packing up the car, because we were going to dad's, at, away for the wedding and Donnie came to pick up Arthur because he was moving home and he, he was taking Arthur home for the summer right or at least for a couple of weeks and uh it worked out to all summer long every year until he was 14 then he went to live with his dad but I remember saying how, to Howie did you put the pregnancy test in the glove box and he went yes dear and him and Donnie looked at each other and went, <laughs> as Arthur's dad, bio dad, Donnie. Um, so, uh, oh, when I read the text, <clears throat> I'm going to have a great, I'm going to have a great weekend. 
I'm going to chew on those cheeks. And I'm going to blow in his neck. I'm going to smell in here. And I'm going to do on his belly. And I'm going to chew the arches of his feet until he can't stand himself. Pisses himself laughing. Hey, our Oki Homestead. Thank you. I appreciate that. Grandbabies are the best. Mine are 21 to 11 years old. They grow up fast. This may be the only grandbaby I ever have. Well, okay. My God, that's Howie's car. He needs a new muffler too. He's putting it in. He's going to be, he's, he's got to have a project, right? Right. He's going to be, you know, anything to, you know, have to be social. <laughs> No, that's not true. He's going to fix his brakes today because he has to. And put his snow tires on because he has to, right? I'm so happy you're going to be able to spend the holiday with your family and especially your grandbaby. Don't overdo in the kitchen. Oh, hell no. I hired somebody to clean. And and uh, so it's like I did the living room. So if he puts anything in his mouth, it's all my fault. But I swept and I vacuumed and I dusted. And then I went over everything with a damp cloth in the living room. And I did my bedroom and she did the bathroom, dining room and kitchen. And she missed one spot on the floor between the island and the fridge. So I, I ringed out, a, uh, I dunked a damp tea towel and I went over it with my foot. And Howie, Howie uh, dismantled the top of the fridge, like the, the upper half of the fridge and cleaned it all out. The freezer's beautiful. So, hey, Kate, Corey, how's it going? But Arthur learned that the fastest way to get to New Brunswick when you're a passenger is to sleep. So he would like wake up for bathroom breaks and, you know, starting at like four years old, waking up for bathroom breaks. And when they stop, we, they would stop for bathroom breaks or something to eat. They, when they go to New Brunswick, they stop in Quebec City overnight so that they don't put the baby through a 12-hour drive. But that's not artificial sweetener, Debbie. That's that's uh, natural sugar. Oh, yes. So when we went up to Manawaki, piles and piles and piles. It's like grandma's feather bed. It's eight feet wide and 10 feet tall or something like that of bags of carrots and apples almost almost at, at almost every gas station and country store between here between uh Brennan's Hill and Manawaki. So, you know what I'm doing Monday? I'm going for a drive. I made sure I put lots of gas in my truck so that I because I have to go pick up Briar tonight. Hey Rosie. Um great process 50 pounds of free free apples. Awesome. Well, I'm going to do three bags. They don't look as big this year. I'm going to do three bags of carrots. Like the, the, the carrots are only about that big, but I'm going to do three bags of carrots. I'm going to can two and dehydrate one. And then I'm going to get a bag of deer apples and I'm going to wash them and I'm going to peel them and core them and slice them. And I'm going to dehydrate them because I really love dehydrated apples. Yes, I'm going to do apples. I'm absolutely, because I've I've still got a, apples and simple syrup and pie filling and all that stuff's in the, in the pantry. We don't eat a lot of this stuff. Only make pies when company's coming, right? Howie's looking forward to his hunk of pumpkin pie. He came home with two spray cans of whipped cream. And I told Mel to pick up some too, so. Hi, Lindsay from the UK. Hello. We're too far south to grow apples. I'm hoping my peach trees will produce next year. There will be four of them. So fingers crossed. When, that's the thing, eh? Everyone's like, do you can peaches? Where the hell am I going to get peaches? I live in northern Canada. Well, not northern, but I live in, you know, western, northern, northwestern Quebec. Right? And I have an apricot tree. And I'm buying mm -hmm. myself one, another one for Christmas. Hang on. Sorry about that. That was Briar messaging me. Um, he was telling me the last time we were together, he was saying like, it's really hard for him to take time off. Like he works every single weekend. 
And so I asked him a month ago to get Thanksgiving weekend off. And he said, there's no way, you know, he kept telling his boss, he kept telling his boss and his boss finally gave him Sunday off and he's getting off early, supposedly today so that I can pick him up. But one of the things Briar's always saying is, you know, half the kitchen staff, whenever it comes to the weekend, they just call in sick. Like ha- that, you know, the people that, he, that are supposed to be filling in for him, just call in sick. Right. So he said, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to be ready at nine because, you know, I can't leave so-and-so alone because so-and-so called in sick. And I said, is this one of, one of the ones that calls in sick all the time on the weekends? He said, but of course, <laughs> you know, wrong. Well, well, I uh, see, I'm not even making applesauce either because I've got, you know, three year old applesauce in there and uh, I have an informal appeal on the 11th to keep, keep praying for me. Absolutely, Rosie, always. So um, yeah, I got a text from Briar. That was a text from Briar. And so you're right. I'm, I'm going to make these uh, Brazilian. I think they're called Brazilian cheese m- muffins. And you make them with tapioca starch. I'm gonna phone. I'm gonna phone the IGA, and see if they have tapioca starch, like gluten free. Uh, but corn starch is replaceable. So I had Howie pick up a box of corn starch because it's egg, starch, salt, and grated cheese, right? And you spray these mini muffin pans, and it's a batter. I think you put milk in it too, right? And it's a batter and these things puff up like little popovers, right? And and they've got like holes in them for gravy and stuff, but there's no gluten in them. So I looked at the cornstarch box, may contain wheat or soy. So I may have to go. Yeah, this is her social security thing. What, more apples, Corey? That's a good idea. So, but app, but dried apple slices, dried apple slices and apple bits. I eat that like candy, like that big jar of apples from my tree. I, I've eaten like a third of it already. Okay, good idea. Well, it is kind of like Yorkshire pudding, only it's made with tapioca starch and cheese, right? And it's a pouring, it's like a, 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 you you know, and you just spray these mini muffin pans and you bake it for four, a four hours. It's like, a, it is very much like a Yorkshire pudding, but it's made with corn flour or corn starch or tapioca starch rather than flour flour. I don't like the texture. Huh. I eat a lot of raw, I'm, I, it's that time of year. I'm, I'm eating two apples every day. So um, get a lawyer if it's a disability claim. No, this is her social security. Something got held up. Something got goofed up and she's been without her check for two months. Hi, Doris. How are you, darling? It's good to see you. So, um, I forget what I was going to say. I'm going to have one more puff and then I'm going to quit because in a couple of hours, I'm going to go and see if I can't get myself some tapioca starch. I'm going to have to drive all the way to Chelsea to get it. But it depends. Like if if Briar, if I can't pick Briar up until 11, right? Then if I can't pick him up till 11 tonight, none of the stores are going to be open for me to get what I need, right? Hey, Sherry. Leanne. Hi, darling. By the way, the picture of the thumbnail for this. Okay, that's getting put out. See, when Bubba's here, there'll be no smoking in my house. Like even for me. It's step out on the porch if I need it. That's once Bubba's here or once once I've got Briar here, because there'll be Arthur and Mel will be taking them home Monday morning. Once I have Briar here, I can make myself some medicated milk and have it in my tea. Did you of course they prepackage my chick repackage my chicken? Of course I did. I have cut too much off for them to dry well, I think, but the slight overripeness is good for the sauce. It makes it, it, it actually makes it sweeter. If I had the time and energy, there's probably a, more than a thousand pounds on this tree. Holy crap. 
Holy crap. Um, I have to take the green tomato bread out of the fridge and put it in the pantry fridge. Like my pantry's off limits to Arthur. I've taken my flour. I took my big bin of flour down off the top of the fridge and I wiped it all down, put it in the pantry. And then the fridge got clean, the top of the fridge and all that stuff. Hey, KB. Wait, wait, wait. How you doing, Karen? I wish I could load a picture. Well, put it on Facebook, sweetheart. So anyway, um, we're ready. We're ready. And I probably have enough time to go to the IGA. Now, should I go to the IGA in Cantley or the one in Chelsea? Okay, I know that. I read chat and ease. I know you're going to email me a shot of this picture, of this tree. Right. <coughs> so, what's spooky? What's spooky? I didn't like the fact that this owl didn't go woo-hoo, woo-hoo, because that's what they sound like here. It sounds like this. Ooh, thunderstorm. Oh, creaky door. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Um, and we've got to, we got to get a family picture somehow. I'll have to set my timer in. I'll have to set my timer on my phone or whatever. Yeah, it's a book. Hi, Freaky Geek. I got a book from my Bubba. See? And it tells a story. See? Ooh, her cauldron bubbles oozing slime. Wait a minute. Her cauldron bubbles oozing, oozing slime. And there's the witch. <laughs> and uh, I'm hoping to... Uh, I've decided I might not have enough fabric for the Dalmatian costume. So I think we're going to make him a brindle boxer costume. Or a brindle costume. So... Definitely family pictures. I've got family pictures. Like, you know that corner cabinet in my in my living room? I was going to give that to Arthur Mel when they lived in the second and third story of the house because it would have been a good, a good thing in the hall. But when Howie put it in the corner, he ran the uh, molding right up to it. So it's actually anchored in the corner. I couldn't get it out. So uh, Mel had, uh, from our last visit, she'd gotten pictures and she got them developed and she sent them to me. And I had these little frames with multiple picture spots in them. So I filled them with my, there's one of my boys, which is Howie, Arthur, Briar, and Bubba. And then there's one, uh, there's one frame with all of us, you know, except I need a better picture of Mel because the only one I had was her when she was pregnant, right? You call your son Bubba. Well, I call him Bubba on on live stream because I, I don't say his name. And I don't show pictures. I don't. Uh, I've, you know, there's a lot of things that new parents I may not agree with. But one of them is, is my my son and my daughter-in-law are very, very smart to keep my, my grandson's picture off the internet. There's a lot of nasty people out there. Right? There's a lot of that. And if, you know, people blithely post their pictures on Facebook of, of their grandbabies and stuff like that. And that's fine if you're if your family's OK with that. But I know now. I know now. Like, thank God my kids weren't babies on the Internet. I remember somebody sending me a picture of their to little toddler girl in a diaper. And she had put a, a like a TikTok filter on her with, you know, cute ears and little r ruby lips and a little bit of sparkly makeup. And I said, honey, I said, I know this is just a messenger, but you need to take that off the Internet. And she said, what do you mean? I said, that is a pedophile's wet dream. And she went, oh, and I went, exactly, exactly. You don't know who's. And once you post pictures on Facebook. You notice a lot of my pictures are emojis because when you post pictures on Facebook, they own them. 
people YouTube and sometimes you can tell the kids hate it. Well, you know what? I had to learn the hard way. Like I got a few of YouTubes with Briar in them from years ago, but Briar won't, you know, I have to ask him if I can take his picture. And, and we have an explore, like I've got beautiful pictures of Briar, but we have an express understanding that I don't post any of his pictures. And then I made him a birthday video a few years ago and he just saw it and he went, mom, that's really personal. I said, what? It's pictures of him in a snowsuit and all these things as he's growing. He said, yeah, but that's like my whole life. And I went, oh, I'm sorry. So I made it private. Right? My picture is from Second Life. It's some sort of two-legged dog. Really? Well, that's true. But we don't have to make it eat. That It's true. The world is chock full of sickos. And we pray for them. We really do. Because if we don't, nobody will. Right? And the ones that, you know, I mean, I, I've said it before. It's easy to pray for the people you love and that you care about and that you're concerned about. And that, but it's really, really hard to, to pray for people that make you, you know, want to punch a wall or, or make you, you know what I mean? But those are the people that need it the most, right? Because they're in dark places. Now we know that for all the good people, there are just as many bad people and some are just destined to be uh, evil in their lifetime, right? And there's no way around it. Those people we give to God. Say, so you handle that, man, because we'll, we'll continue to fill people, you know, love people um, into the light as best of our ability, right? Because that's apparently what my purpose is. And I'm only human. I make mistakes, but it's, you know, it's our job to pray and love people that need it the most. Yeah, it's easy. You know, you look after my family, God, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, look after that crazy guy who thinks he owns my property, you know, because that, that kind of thing, right? Because even when they, the, the angrier people make you, the more you need to pray for them. It just makes it because that's the, that's what we were taught. Right. Right. It's the, the, I hate to use the word sinner, but it, it's the sinner or the dark people that we really need to show the light to. If only by example. Right. What's food items? Oh, Kathy, that's not wisdom, honey. That's not wisdom. Well, it's, it, it's, it's an understanding I've come to. It's an understanding I've come to. Not every, like I used to say, you know, you, you pray, pray for your crotchety old neighbor. You don't have to love your crotchety neighbor. You don't have to go up and give him a hug. But part of loving him can be respecting your respecting his boundaries and you know respecting his mental emotional spiritual physical boundaries and continuing to pray for for him to you know to be a happier person whatever the case but you don't have to bake him a cake and go over and say i love you neighbor give him a hug unless it's like gert across the road i love you neighbor here's some zucchini you know the freebies in my upper post. Oh, right. Hey, Donna, how are you, darling? You missed Rubber Band Man last night. And they cut us off deadly last night. They cut us off at an hour and 15 minutes. And when they, they didn't just put the banner up. They put the banner up and gave me a half a song, and then they just disconnected me. It was weird. Pray for those who persecute your enemies your enemies and show mercy to those who need it most. Well, that's just common sense, isn't it? Because we know that adding anger or negativity to an already angry or negative situation only is pouring gasoline on a fire, right? So if you can't contain until... If you can't button your lip until you've done some deep breathing and go, okay, why is this person so angry? Or why is this person so mean? 
right? Like I said, I, my favorite, my, my favorite memory of, because, you know, I would chew on shit for weeks. I'd get a resentment and I would chew on that for years sometimes. Ask my cousin Angie. All right. Ask my cousin Angie how long I can hold a resentment. But a resentment, resentments are, um, are, are poison to the soul. Because resentment, to resent actually means to refeel. And you're refeeling a bad situation. I'm not a doctor, not a scientist, psychologist. I'm just sharing my experience, strength, and hope. <clears throat> the one I did in all caps, family dollar. Hang on, I'm going to look. Thank you for saying that because now I just look for all caps. Bob's Red Mill. Okay, well, they I know they have that. At, um, I don't see it, sweetheart. I don't see it. But my point is, is we can get so caught up in self-righteous anger because if somebody smacks you, you have a right to have a negative reaction to that. But this whole turn the other cheek thing, this is all just common sense, Right? Because this is one of my favorite things. See, I I had road rage. I used to have road rage. All you know this story. Raise your hand if you haven't heard my road rage stories. Hey, Tony G. Hey, baby. How are you? When you dumpster dive, does you get rigged out with scuba gear? <laughs> I don't dumpster dive. Are you kidding? I can barely climb my front steps and they're extra wide, extra deep, extra shallow with two by four railings. Dumpster dive. You're so funny. Um. Well, yeah, but Amazon and Superstore are not within my reach right now. But I'm the only one that sees it. <laughs> I, I haven't heard that story. Okay. So I used to have road rage so bad that I would chase people down with my car. I shit you not. Some guy cut me to off in Elmer one day and I ghost, I followed him all over for a good 40 minutes. Just stayed on his tail. Not angry, aggressive, but I did until he got the idea that, Hey buddy, you know, cause he, he cut me off and flipped me off. That's what it was. And it's like, and there was one night um, I was going to um, pick up Briar because he got homesick. And it was just a block and a half away. But I got in my Ford Focus because I was in my PJs, which was a night shirt and flip flops and underwear. And I went to get Briar. And I had to drive by the, um, the Deshaines Hotel, which is just this little dive in Deshaines. In, on the outreaches of Elmer because where we lived used to be a little borough of its own called the Shanes. And as I went by, someone went, there's a bunch of guys standing outside and I have summer, I have my window down and, and somebody goes, Hey! And I slammed on the brakes and I looked at him and I said, what? Because A, I'd been take, gotten out of bed to go get Briar at midnight, right? I'm in my jammies, right? And he goes, oh, sorry, I thought you were somebody else. And I went, right. So, because he stepped out into the road. He didn't step out in front of the car, but he stepped out of the road and yelled, because apparently his friend has my car too, same kind of car. So I went and got Briar. And as we were coming back, this, the, this, the guy must have forgot me in, in like the, the two minutes it took me to go get Briar, because he did it again. But he yelled something like, blah, blah, blah. And he, and he banged my car as I was going by. And the brakes went on. And I started to get out of the car. And I hear this voice in the back seat. Mommy, please don't. Mommy, please don't. Let's just go home. And I went, blink. Right. So I got in the car, went home. And I told how I, I, because we lived in the second story of our duplex. And I called up to the window and I told how you phone the police. And then I guess the, the, the head honcho of the neighborhood 
because it wasn't a great neighborhood, came down the street and said, what happened? And I told him. And he said, I'll deal with it. Don't worry about the police. That's how we do things, right? I only lived in that place for three years in that neighborhood, but they knew me by then. After this, they all knew me, right? And so the next morning, I found a handwritten note and a phone number, a handwritten apology and a phone number on my windshield saying, if I dented your car, if I scratched it, my apologies, blah, 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 I will fix it. So, you know, I, I really like this other guy. <laughs> he was a really nice guy. So that's how I was. You just did not, I, you know, I, I was a, I, I was a road rager. And then we got a mobile home in Arizona, right? And I said, okay, I'm going to Walmart. And how he go, okay, just give me a minute and I'll drive you. I said, no, I can drive. Bev, you're not driving anywhere in Peoria, Arizona. You're not driving anywhere in Arizona. I went, why? He said, road rage. I said, so? And he goes, Bev, people around here carry guns in their cars. Right? And I went, oh, yeah. so, oh, no, yeah, it's not a temper, honey. Hi, Justice. It's not, this is something I'm going to tell, I'm going to finish this up with something my brother told me, right? So, I finally got it, I started to figure it out, right? I put a bumper sticker on my vehicle that says honk if you're a friend of Bill W's, which is Bill W was one of the founding members of Alcoholics Anonymous. So whenever someone beeped, instead of going, I'd go, oh, and how he'd go, Bev, they might be a friend of Bill W's. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. So it took me a long time. We're talking, I, I, I started driving at 26 and I started finishing my road rage like last year was my last incident. But I'll tell you something, right? Rage, it's not anger, it's rage, right? So my bro my one of my brothers were sitting here one day and uh, my sister and my brother were here visiting and I was, it, it, there's a video, I was making uh, green tomato relish and uh, you could hear them in the background, you know, hazing me while I'm trying to do a video. But I remember telling my brother, it's like, I got anger issues, man. He goes, no, you don't. And I said, no, I have anger issues. And he said, no, Bev, we have rage issues, right? Aunt Bev, I'm old now. Justice, is this my justice? Is this little wit, little witch? Mini witch? Am I? Did I get it right? Answer me, Justice. You're not old. Oh, my darling. Guys, meet my niece. Actually, my great niece, Justice. She is. Uh... Hey, Missy Royer. What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving, Justice? Are you going to Nana and Papa's? Uh, I don't, are you going to the elk farm? Justice is granddaughter to my sister-in-law and her husband at the elk farm. So the best thing I can show you, the best example I can show you of how far I've come, because when shit happens to me and, and people, or people dis, disrespect me or, or whatever, I used to hold on to that for a really, really long time. Like it's, it's taken me five years to deal with some family that I just don't deal with anymore. And there's no anger attached to it. It's just, no, I don't, I don't have time for that in my life. But last year we were coming home from the races and the car was on this great big long trailer, not a tow trailer. It was great big on, on a long, on a long trailer. And we were pulling it behind the motor home. And whose birthday? What? Wait, what? October. Okay, here we go. We got a birthday in the house. You ready, Justice? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, little mini witch. Happy birthday to you. Mwah. The last time you were here, we had Thanksgiving here, and you were just a youngin. That's awesome. Um, so everybody say happy birthday. That's awesome. I don't often get family come in except for Angie and Wendy, right? But anyway, um, so we were driving home with the motor home and the race car on the trailer. And the, the roads up here, this, you know, some of them don't even have shoulders, right? And some guy in a little piss pot passed us so bad on like on a corner kind of on a corner like we could see but something was coming and we had to, to put on the brakes to let him in or it was going to be a head-on collision all over the highway right and i went you son of a blah 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 and then i went and now we're talking in seconds i went he could have been he could have been on his way to an emergency room he could have had somebody dying of a heart attack in his passenger seat. I don't know. So directing my anger at, at that person. Yes. In, 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 in the moment, it just looks like a total dickhead. But in reality, it could have been a hundred other things. What made him do such a stupid thing. Right. Hey, seashell. Good morning, darling. What's with no cover? In will do the wash pan next time for sure. Cover with a towel. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, it all comes back to love, right? Me reigning in my rage taking a breath and going, okay, that person could have been in dire medical need or had someone in the vehicle that was in dire medical need, right? Maybe they weren't just being an asshole. Maybe they were desperate. And that switches off the negativity and turns on prayer mode or, or you know, the mode where you go, okay, you know, we're going we're gonna to just hand that over kind of thing, right? Gotta go feed chicks. Okay, Yoki, hurry up. So, uh, yeah. Late but here. Hey, Mama Dukes. Well, I'm soon going to be going to the grocery store to look for... Actually, I'm going to phone the grocery store to make sure... I might even check in town in Wakefield, although I hate the idea of going to the general store. I just hate hate the idea of going to the general store, but it would save me an extra 20 kilometers or an extra six miles, five or, I don't know, 10 miles um, to the other store to get it. So I'll have to, I'm, that just makes sense, doesn't it? Phone the store first and find out if they have, you know, gluten-free tapioca starch. Yeah, I hate grocery shopping. <laughs> I hate grocery shopping. Well, I like it when I got lots of money and I got help. But going on my own, I rarely shop on my own anymore unless it's a small stuff. Because I... Oh, and I'm making, um, I'm making deconstructed uh, cabbage rolls for supper tonight. So, I mean, I... I like shopping when somebody else is... is you know, if I got an electric cart... Or somebody else is, you know, loading and unloading the vehicle. Shopping to me is nothing more than a pain in the butt. Once it's in the pantry, I'm a happy camper. I'm just not a people person. <clears throat> I have a hard time dealing with people in the car or out. Honestly, my husband says if I wasn't married to him, I'd be a hermit. Like, you know, how he was on his way home. And I said, he said, I'm going to Manawaki to get tires. And I said, can I come? And he goes, well, be ready and I'll pick you up. And so that's why my Freaky Friday was late last night. We, um, 16, Justice? Oh, my God. 16. So you didn't say, Justice, what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Hey, Allison. Well, 
what did you wreck the spelling on? Can you grow tapioca? I have no idea. I didn't know what tapioca is until two years ago. I uh, Yeah, I bought peaches from Costco. The next time I'm in Food Basics with Howie, I'm going to see if they have my big jars of peaches. I like them. This is the size of the jar they come in. Don't look at the, what's in there. But this is the size of the jar, and it is 1.7 liters. So it's almost a half-gallon jar. 1.7 liters is one and three-quarters liters. So, or roughly. <clears throat> hey, Allison. There you go. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to be doing videos on these these pies and stuff. But you know what? I think I will go to the IGA because then I might be able to find something a little more up my lines. Maybe, the, maybe they'll have a gluten-free pie crust mix. That would be like tremendously awesome. Got your G1D. Good job. Okay, wait a second. You didn't say whether you're having uh, Thanksgiving with your fo your grandfolks or not. Oh, don't turn too much behind the wheel. You'll make the car sick. You're, you come out with the weirdest shit, Freaky Geek. You really do. You really do. Our IGA has nothing like that in the USA. Well, our IGA has... has that's okay, sweetheart. Our IGA has a whole uh, gluten-free section. Right? So... Um, Although I could probably get Arthur and Mel to stop, but I don't want them to stop with the baby on the way, you know, with the ba baby in the car, right? They just want to get the. Sh they'll soon figure out that kids are pretty good travelers, right? I know he's only nine months old, but, but you know, sorry I distracted her. <laughs> Ten days total. Okay, I'm missing something here. Anyway, uh, whole tapioca pearls have to be ordered. I ha think I have some of those. I'll be right back. No, I must have used it all. I used to have tapioca starch. And I only need a cup of it. But it's even if I did, it would probably be gluten contaminated. So, too much planned. What do you mean too much planned? Oh, I'm having Thanksgiving with Nana and Papa Sunday. And then having another one Monday with Mom's side. And another in November for U.S. Th say Thanksgiving in November with Allison and her side. Wow! Allison, is that princess? They grow so fast. Yeah. What's a lot of dinners? But I hate making it. I like how you stretch our ho our holiday one day longer than I does. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I have a pie crust recipe that you use egg whites. Okay, Kathy, you got my email address, Miss, um, connectedheartsfamily at gmail.com, all one word. Dad's princess. Okay. All right. That's Allison. Okay. That's awesome. She's a wonderful girl, isn't she? she a, she's great. I was so lucky to meet her. Well, listen, folks, we've been on here an hour and I have things I got to do. I'm going to go out and uh, I'm going to go out and pull some carrots. And I was going to wait for Bubba, but it's awful rainy and damp. And most of our leaves have gotten dropped with the rain. She is amazing. She is amazing. Everybody gets called Nana Witch, Little Witch, Mini Witch, all these things. But the new daughter-in-law, she gets called Princess. She's beautiful, too. And she's like, she just walks into a room and takes over in the most lovely way. I just love her. 
I will. I will. I'm going to go out and get some fresh air and see what how he's doing. Actually, I should take my camera out there and see what he's doing. And then I'm going to go check my carrots. I think I should put an apron on or something. Anyway, folks, um, to all my Canadian friends, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, I'll be working on Halloween from here on out. And um, to all my uh, American friends, well, I'll say happy Thanksgiving when that time comes. All right. But just remember, every day is a day for Thanksgiving. Why? Because if you can't find something to be thankful for every day, then you're in a pretty tough place, right? So take care. God bless. I'll be praying for you all. And uh, I wish I could share pictures, but I won't be sharing any pictures of this weekend. But you will get maybe some videos of me making the pies, depending on how busy I am. And maybe making the, the uh, costume. Okay? I love you guys. Take care when I realize the holiday is a different day than you and me. Yes! Yes! Monday's Thanksgiving. It's always the second Monday in October in Canada. Take care. I love you. Mwah! God bless. Happy Thanksgiving, Justice. You hug your Nana and Papa and your dad and Allison and everybody for me, okay? And your sister and all that stuff. All right? I love you guys. Bye-bye. I'm going to have a fun weekend.